if any of y'all are in your cars. So for real, I'm in my car because I imagine now you're spending a little bit more time in your car, driving to school, driving to dance, all the other activities you have going on. And you can have kids worship in the car. Like win-win, how fun is that? All right, so the question that I want you guys to discuss today is, what does the word tempted mean? And when was the last time you were tempted? All right, have that discussion, go for it. So tempted to me means it's something that you know you shouldn't do, but it really sounds like something you want to do. Does that make sense? And I was trying to think of the last time I was tempted, like most recently. And okay, I'm going to tell mine. This is some of you moms will get this one. Okay. So the last time I was tempted, I was looking at Instagram and this person I followed bought all of these great clothes, which is fine. It's fine to buy great clothes, but I was tempted to go and buy those same clothes that she had. And then I started looking, I thought, Hmm, I actually have enough clothes in my closet. I don't really need more clothes, but I really, really wanted those clothes that that person showed. They looked really cute. So I definitely was tempted. Okay, let's worship and you can do that in the car if you're in the car. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. 
So today's story kind of is a little odd to me, but it's super helpful to me too, that we all are tempted in some way or another. And, and I think temptations can happen like every day, but it happens every day. And there's this story in Matthew where Jesus is tempted, that Jesus, who is God, but also human, was tempted. And so the story starts where Jesus goes into the wilderness. So picture like a desert with rocks and sand, no one around, no water, a desert. And he goes out to the desert for 40 days, four, zero, 40 days. You guys, that's like over a month. He is out in the wilderness all by himself. Okay. So he goes out there and he has nothing to eat, nothing to drink. They call that fasting where you go without something for a period of time. So Jesus goes out there for 40 days, doesn't have anything to eat, nothing to drink. And can you imagine, just imagine this. If you went for 40 days without having anything to eat, how would you be feeling? I don't know about you. I'd be hungry, right? And maybe a little cranky. I would not be in a good place. There's this, this term that our family talks about. It's a blend of hungry and angry, hangry. I think Jesus is probably feeling a little hangry at this point. And so he's out there for 40 days. And we find out in the Bible that Satan comes to see him. And the way that I read it and picture it in my mind is that it is like Satan in real life, like right there talking to Jesus. And Satan goes to Jesus and says, Hey, if you're really God, if you're really who you say you are, you would take these stones. Imagine him picking up a couple stones. You would take these stones and you would turn them into bread. So you'd have something to eat. Now that would be pretty tempting to me if I hadn't eaten anything for 40 days to change these stones into bread. But Jesus knows if Satan is telling me to do something, it's not right. And so Jesus responds to Satan with the Bible. He responds with scripture and says, I'm not going to do that. That's not what my God wants. I'm not going to do that. So then Satan takes him to the top of the temple And I, you know, I I try to picture this in my mind. It looks like they just like zip over there. Like it's not like they walked or anything. It's like they just appear there. And so they're at the top of the temple and Satan says, Hey, if you're really, if you're really God, you can jump off this temple and God will protect you. You should do that. And again, Jesus uses the Bible to say, nope, I'm not going to do that. It's not what God wants. I'm not going to be tempted by that. So a third time, Satan does something else. And he takes Jesus to this high mountain where he can see all these lands, all these kingdoms, it says. And if any of y'all have climbed or hiked up to somewhere high and you can just see for miles and miles, I kind of imagine that where Jesus and Satan are. And Satan goes, if you worship me right now, I will give you power over all of this land. And guess what Jesus does? Any guesses? He uses the Bible and he says, nope, I'm not doing that. And he says, go away, Satan. And so Satan leaves and it says that angels come and encourage Jesus. And it says, attend to him. And I wonder what that was like angels come and take care of Jesus. And so Jesus did not give in to these temptations. He chose to do what God wanted him to do. And he used the Bible to help him do the right thing. And I think the lesson for some of us is, hey, when we are tempted, because we're going to be tempted, you're going to be tempted to do things that aren't right. It's a part of life. It's a part of being a human, guys. That when you're tempted, that you can also use 
the Bible, certain verses in the Bible to encourage you and help you get out of that temptation. There's a verse that says, hey, in the Bible that says, no temptation has seized you. God will always give you a way out. That God will help you get out of temptation and say no to what's not right. He will. Jesus is um, experienced all the hard things that we go through. So the next time you think of, oh man, I really want to do that, but I know it's not right, but I really want to do that, but I know it's not right, that you should go to Jesus because he has experienced what it feels like to be tempted to do the wrong thing. Okay, so what I want you guys to talk about is Has there ever been a time where a verse in the Bible has encouraged you when you were tempted to do the the wrong thing? Okay. Second thing, if there hasn't, I want you to think about, huh, is there a verse that I could put somewhere um, or memorize, put in my head, and it would help me the next time I'm tempted? Okay, go. Okay, I would love to know what verses were encouraging to you. I'm gonna tell you something that I do is I have verses on the mirror in my bathroom. I sometimes have verses in my car. I have verses places where I'd see them a lot because guys, I feel like I get tempted all the time. And while my temptation didn't look like Jesus, Jesus's, it's this little voice inside of my head that just isn't speaking truth. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it's things like, you aren't good enough, or you're a real mess up, or you should be jealous of that person. I mean, those kinds of things. And they're just in my head. And what happens when I look at scripture that's posted maybe on my mirror or in my car or or in my kitchen, all of a sudden it takes my attention off of that temptation and back onto what's right. So you guys, y'all could write a verse and post it somewhere where you're gonna see it all the time and it will help you do the right thing. Okay, I'm gonna pray for you guys. Um, God, I ask that those temptations that we are faced with every day, that you would help us have a way out. And God, that we would go to Jesus when we're faced with something hard, a hard decision. And Jesus, thank you for being a savior that knows exactly what we have gone through. You've done all the hard things and you've shown us how to live. Help us to live like you. In your name I pray, amen. Who am I that the highest king would well But he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love.
guys, if you're new to our videos, um, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I did want to tell you that we have a YouTube channel. It's FBC, our children's ministry, and we've got lots of content on there. We read books on there. We have bedtime stories. We have some fun videos. We also have all of our old kids worship videos that just have great content. So we'd love for you guys to check that out and learn more about Jesus.